Hey guys, welcome to the Space Side Scorer Beginners tutorial series. In this tutorial, this is going to be tutorial number 11. In this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding multiple types from enemies using scene inheritance. We did that in the last video. If you haven't seen it, um, you can check the description. I've linked all of the videos down there. Um, but basically, um, yeah, we did that in the last videos for the parallax background. So we're going to set that up for the enemy, but we need to make some changes so we can kind of, um, set up multiple enemies pretty quickly. So I'm going to hit the script icon and go back to the enemy script. And I'm going to full screen this real quick. Okay, let's see. So we also, we want to make a score variable up here. So... With the export variable, we're going to be using this to actually modify the enemies without modifying the code like we did in the last video. So we're basically going over a lot of the same stuff from the last video, but applying it to the enemies. So that's basically what we're going to be doing. Um, let's see. So now we have our speed showing up on our enemy. You can check by going to 2D and... Clicking on the enemy. There we go. We have our speed showing up. And I'll set the default speed to 50. Because that'll probably be like one of the lowest speeds. And let's see. Oh yeah. I'm going to set a variable called value. Um, not value. Let's do point value. And I'll just leave this at 5. So if you just set it equal to, it'll just be a default value whenever you um, have the thing in there. And what I did here is I did global.score right here, plus equals point value. Reason why I'm doing that is so now when we do more enemies, we can actually edit that point value and um, have more enemies that give you um, different points and stuff. So... That's what basically we're doing here, and if you had more sounds that you wanted to do and play for different enemies, you can create a variable called like ex like the sound you want to play, like var explosion sound, and have the string. But um, right now we're just gonna leave it at the explosion because we're not gonna be doing different sounds. But if you wanted to, that is possible. Let's see what else we need to change. We don't really have much to change in here, but now we should be able to edit the variables right here. Yeah, basic variable speed and point value. Now, I'm also going to set up different enemies with different health values, because right now you shoot an enemy and it just blows up. But some enemies we want to take like more hits to destroy, so I'm going to make another variable. I'm going to set it variable health we'll just set this to one but now we need to incorporate this into the enemy so when it hits an enemy damager still immediately exploding what i'm going to do is i'm just going to do health minus equals one actually i'm going to do health minus equals area dot Gets parent dot damage. You see, now we're checking for the bullets damage because we're going to add a damage variable in the bullets so you guys will be able to manipulate that variable with like power ups or upgrades or whatever to um, get it to do more damage to enemies other than saying it. So in the player bullet, I'm just going to set variable damage equals 1. And you can set this as an export variable if you want to do export and variable damage. It's totally up to you. And you can do the same for speed. Export and... I'll do that for now. Why not? Um... Let's see. And we, we're going to remove all this code to destroy the um the ship because we don't actually need to destroy it yet we're just subtracting the health we need to check if the health is less or equal to zero before we want to destroy it so 
if health is less than or equal to zero, then we want to blow it up. And you don't want to do this area dot get parent dot free. We're actually going to do that in the hitbox um, damage right here, where we check for the enemy damage or we want to destroy the um, the bullet, higher than destroying it right here. So I just pasted that right there. Um, <coughs> that should be good right there. Um, so now we're going to set up some inheritance to stuff. And I actually have some enemy assets in the description. I have a link to all my assets. So you can actually use the, um, the enemy sprites from there if you want. I'm probably going to import those right now. So I'm going to make a folder new folder, I'm going to call this enemies, right here, enemies, and I'm going to drag enemy one under this folder, we're probably going to have to change some things in the scripts because it might cause some issues, let's see, I'm going to open up the script real quick, Maybe we don't. Maybe there is no things that we actually preload. Oh, it might be in the enemy generator. We'll fix that in a moment. Okay, so we have our enemy one. I'm going to make a new folder right here. We're going to call this enemy two. Enemy dos. Okay, so now I'm actually going to import the... Um, what's it called? The, whoa, my thing just minimized. Sorry about that. I'm going to import the enemy two spray right here. There we go. So we have our enemy two spray in here and I have an enemy three spray too. We're going to be setting up three enemies throughout this tutorial, but you guys are free to add more enemies if you want. So now we're gonna actually make a new inherited scene so up when you have the enemy selected in the scene what you want to do is go scene new inherited scene make sure you have enemy one dot tscn selected press open okay now we have a new unsaved scene that inherits from enemy one we're gonna call this enemy two and we're going to change the sprite. So I'm going to drag enemy two right in here. There we go. And this is going to be more of a faster ship. Actually, you know, I'm going to make this a slower ship. So it's going to be like moving at 25 speed. That's going to have like three health. So quite a bit of health and it will be worth like 10 points. And you guys can do it your own variables or whatever values you want. This is just like, I'm picking some like random values for this tutorial. It doesn't really matter. But if you want to make a balanced game, I would suggest trying to pick some good values. That would work for the enemies. But I'm going to save now. Enemy2.tscn. I'm going to save this. Not in enemy1. So I'm going to hit the up path button. Save this in the enemy 2 folder. Press save. So now we have enemy 2 in here. And we have the scene. So we have our enemies set up. But our enemy spawner won't actually spawn them in yet. But I'm going to set up some more inherited enemies. We're going to get our third one in before we start setting up our spawner. So at enemies right here. I'm just going to right click this folder. And we're going to make a new folder. Call this enemy three. And I'm going to import our final enemy image into enemy three. And I'm going to drag this up right there. There we go. So now we have that in there. Go back to enemy one. Dot scene. Now go up to scene right here new inherited scene basically the same thing 
select the enemy one, open, rename this from enemy one to enemy three, drag in the new sprite from enemy three, it's orange sprite. I'm gonna set speed to like 100. And health is probably going to stay at like one or something. Maybe two. I'll give it two. Two health. And we're going to make this like 15 points. And I am going to save it. We don't want to save it in the enemy one folder. We want to save it in the enemy three folder. And we want to press save. So now we have that. The We have all of our enemies in their scene saved. So now I'm going back to our world scene and I'm gonna go back into our enemy generator and I'm gonna go into the code of it. And I'm gonna full screen this. So either than preloading the enemies, what I think we can do, which would be better, is we're gonna export the variables so we can edit them in the inspector. So instead of doing this, I'm gonna do export packed scene because this is a scene that we want to import into it enemy one export packed scene variable enemy two export packed scene variable enemy three so now we have all these scenes that we can use and either than just, and we're gonna change this right here. I'm gonna set up a system so we can actually um, get the enemy that's, that we want. So I'm also gonna do an export integer var enemy number. So the reason why I'm doing this enemy number variable is when we're creating our enemies, I want to be able to have tons of enemy scenes, but only use a certain amount of them. And so this is basically just going to tell the game in the randomness um, which enemy it wants to pick. So enemy number, if it was one, it would only pick enemy one. If there was two enemies, it would pick either enemy one or two. If there, if you said enemy number three, it would pick one, two, or three. So it kind of just helps the randomness in here. So instead of enemy, we're gonna do git, which what git does in, um, in this kind of scope is it's gonna get the um, one of these pack scenes. I'll show you right here. So, and we're gonna put in a string, enemy underscore. So you see all of our variables are enemy underscore only thing that changes in these variables are the numbers right here one two and three so i'm going to do plus string and you can do enemy number but i'm just going to put an enemy number for now but we're going to change this later on so now you can see that what this what's happening right here is it's it gets so it's the it will get the first the first half of the string right here, the first half of the pack scene. And it's basically just trying to find the one of these pack scenes variables. And it strings the enemy number. So if we set an enemy number to two, it'll be M when it puts this all together, it'll be en enemy underscore two. Because it's stringing it together. And the string function just converts this variable to a um piece of text but it won't be whenever you're converting it to a piece of text it won't be like this it'll be like this so it will just convert that to a piece of text so it can add that to this enemy so if we had two as our enemy number it'd look like this and it'd be like oh i know enemy two that's this variable and it'd get that so that's basically what we're doing here and i'm gonna set up a variable i'm gonna say, say enemy type equals rand underscore range z actually not zero one through enemy number so what this is doing now is we're getting a random value in between one 
and our enemy number. So if you had our enemy number between one and one, it would pull out one because there is no numbers between one and one. So that would be the randomness. If you set two, it would be one between two. So now, either from enemy number, we're using enemy type. Reason why I put one is we start at one, we don't start at zero. And instead of just doing random range, we want to round it so it's a whole number. I did not hit that parenthesis at the end. So now we're rounding up to a whole number and we're finding the correct, we're um, finding a random enemy. And so this, the reason why we're using this kind of system is so you guys can make as much enemies as you want and then you just have to tweak the enemy number and then import all the packed enemy scenes that you want to. So that's basically the basis of this. And if you want one enemy to spawn more than another enemy, then you'd set multiple enemy variables and set enemy one to the same ver to the so you'd set the same pack scene to the packed scene to most uh, to some of the to most of the um the variables and then set one enemy to the other. So you kind of have the randomness. It's kind of complicated for a beginner's tutorial, but I was trying to make it so it's ex is it as expandable as possible for you guys. So I'm sorry if it's a bit confusing. I it it's probably going to be a bit confusing for new users, but you guys will get it soon. So now we have our enemies right here: enemy one, two, and three. I'm going to drag our enemy 1 right here, our enemy 2 right here, and our en enemy 3 right here. And I'm saying enemy number equal to 3. And this is all in our enemy generator. And we can press run. Let's see if it gets these enemies. Oh, we got enemy two in here. I'm shooting him. He takes a couple of hits. And we got the multiple enemies. Those are fast ones. And they all hurt you too. So this is this is really cool. You guys can make your own enemies and it's actually really easy. Like anyone can just set up the variables and make their own enemies and have different images for them. So and you can make more complex enemies, like enemies that shoot back and stuff. That would require extra code, but for now, this is what you guys can do. Um, you can figure out how to get them to shoot too if you want. And it it looks like your score doesn't reset. Did you see that? I died and our score doesn't get... I'm going to set that up. Hold up. <laughs> I'm going to... On function underscore ready, I'm set global.score equals zero. Okay, maybe that fixed it. That that was weird. I thought I did that in the last tutorial. That's funny. I must have forgot. Oh, maybe... Is it called score? Maybe that's not the variable. No, it's called score. Okay, that's weird. Let's do that when um, our player is... Actually, I'm gonna put I'm gonna set equal to zero when the um, when the particles are destroyed. The player to destroy particles. I want to do that there. So before we reload, I want to set it equal to zero. Hopefully that fixes it. That was weird. I must have forgotten. That's funny. Okay, twenty, thirty, forty. Okay, let's die now. 50. Okay, now it goes back to zero. So, yeah, just put those in the player destroy particles. I can't believe I forgot to do that. That's funny. Okay. But now the score should reset now. And we have our enemies spawning with multiple enemies. So that's basically it for this tutorial. I hope you guys liked it and learned something new.